the first one, rule number one, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's inspired from one of my favorite scenes in the movie where they're you guys remember they're working in the cafeteria. They were supposed to get hooked up with these good jobs after they do that Rebenga hit in Freedom Town in the tents, and all of a sudden Tony's pissed and he's like, "Coño, you know, look at this." Look at these onions, you know. Yeah, we're here washing dishes, and we should be picking gold from the street. And basically, this scene, this line, what it tells me is, it's, you got to be hungry. No matter what circumstances you find yourself in in life, your hunger, your desire, your ambition, that, that itch in the bottom of your stomach, right, that can't go away. That can never go away. That always has to be there no matter how bad you're doing, how low of a low you're at, or how high of a high you're at, right? Because hunger can be destroyed by difficulty, and it can be destroyed by success as well. I'm sure you've met people who have attained many things in life and then lost it all. Why? It's because they weren't hungry anymore. They weren't that... That bit, they didn't have that basic instinct in them. They didn't have that that hunger, that drive, that got them, you know, to where they wanted to be. And then, since they stopped doing the things that got them to a successful place in life, they stopped getting the things they were getting. They stopped getting the success, the accolades, the material possessions, whatnot, so on and so forth. If we're applying this to the gym, they're not fit anymore. You know what I mean? I'm sure you've seen pictures of people when they were young in their prime. When they were fit, and then all of a sudden they got a few kids, they're married, and they're out of shape. That's because they stopped doing the things that made them fit. So now they have different results. It's about hunger. It's about drive, desire. I work in sales, right? And I recently switched careers, and I've in my first month, I finished number two in the whole company, number one in my department. And people ask me, man, you know, what are you doing? Oh, my God. How? And my only response is I want it more than you. I'm hungrier than you. I stay later, I come before you, I'm the first one in, last one out, and it's just a matter of wanting it more. That's really all it comes down to. There's another part of that scene where Tony and Manny walk out and they meet Omar, you know, in the Cadillac in the parking lot, and they get offered a job, and basically they get offered nothing, next to nothing to, to for that job, and Tony tells them, <laughs> who do you think we are, baggage handlers? So that's number two. Number two is know your worth. I personally, I learned my worth years ago when I was working at McDonald's for minimum wage and I was working 40 to 50 hours a week. I didn't have enough money to stay broke. I, I My check was, <laughs> you know, I was paid Friday morning, broke by Friday afternoon. And I realized in that moment how little I was giving myself as a worth, just as a, as a person. And I, I saw other people who were making financially a lot more, and they were my same age. They weren't that much smarter than me. Why? Because they realized they had a worth, and they only accepted that worth moving forward. You need to know your worth, and you can't accept anything less than what you're worth. Even if you lose a, a deal, even if something falls through because you couldn't come to agree you know, on numbers or whatever it is, I'd rather lose a deal on my terms than accept a deal on someone else's terms. I want to say that again. I'd rather lose a deal on my terms than accept a deal on someone else's terms. It's okay if, if things didn't go through because you couldn't agree on something. It's not okay if you go through with them just because you're scared of losing the deal. Whether it's a business deal, a relationship, whatever it is, you can apply that to so many things. And I think so many people undervalue themselves these days. Know your worth. Rule number two. Rule number three. I'm taking it to Lopez myself, not you, me. That's a line that Tony tells Omar over the phone after the scene at the Sunray Motel. And that to me tells me not to depend on anyone. Make sure you're doing things the right way. Make sure you're doing them yourself. Make sure you're being diligent. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, right? So... Basically, it's Omar made the mistake of sending them to the hotel and not verifying the situation. And because he didn't verify the situation, he put Tony and Manny and the rest of them in a dangerous spot where they almost died and got one of their friends killed. So what did Tony do? 
instead of letting Omar take charge again, he was like, uh, 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 I'm taking charge and I'm going to do this myself. So it, it's the same thing in life. Make sure things are getting done right. It's it, there is an old saying. What's it? What's it? If uh, <laughs> if you want things right done right, you got to do them yourself. In a lot of cases, that's that's the that's the way to go. Me personally, I I'm a person that I'm very proactive. I'm very I don't beat around the bush, right? I don't. I'm very direct. And in situations where I know certain people aren't gonna put in the effort that I'm gonna put in. I go ahead and I do it myself. Why? Because if I do it, I know how it's going to get done. If I leave it up to somebody else, guess what? The chances are that's probably not going to get done. Or if it gets done, it's not going to get done right. So always make sure that if something isn't to your liking or if you know it's a risk because you're letting someone who might not get the job done right do it, do it yourself. Go to the source. Don't leave things up to chance, basically. Make sure you get them done and get them done right. So number four is uh, if everyone remembers the Babylon Club when they go in for the first time and Frank and Tony are talking over here by the club and they're looking around and they're seeing different people and they see the fat guy in the corner called Nacho Contreras, right? And Frank tells Tony, he's a real Hasa, right? So what's he saying here? Hasa is a, is a Yiddish word for pig. It's, it's a greedy person, right? So he's saying, don't, and don't underestimate the other guy's greed. What does that mean? When you're in environments every day, it could be as, as simple as a work environment, and it could be the gym, it could be a person, just a, a social setting. Never underestimate the greed of other people, meaning don't, don't trust people. Don't be so easy to trust. You got you to gotta have a set of parameters where... People have to pass these parameters in, er in order to earn your trust. I'm not saying be, uh, you know, distrustful of everyone and just be, you know, this, this lone wolf. What I'm saying is there has to be standards to be in my circle. There has to be standards to earn my trust. There has to be standards to be a friend of mine. There has to be standards to me by my business partner. Because at the end of the day, I've, I personally, through life, I've been put in many situations where other people took advantage of me. But if I think back to those situations, was it really their fault? Or were they already giving me signs that they could have done things like this, right? I'm sure some of you are, are good people and I had a good heart too and you wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. But at the end of the day, if someone's giving you signs of what kind of potentially bad thing they can do, why give them the benefit of the doubt? You don't have to cut them off. You don't have to be a bad person. I'm not saying do bad things to them. What I'm saying is, Put yourself in a position to win. Don't put yourself in a position to lose. And here, don't underestimate the other guy's greed. It's just don't put yourself in situations where you know there's a possibility where something can go wrong. Use your judgment. That's all I'm saying. We're almost done, so two more. Lesson number two, don't get high on your own supply. Everybody remembers that line, right? When Elvira starts talking to, to Tony. And this specifically spoke to me and it, it told me something totally different than what most people think when they hear this, right? So some people think don't get high on your own supply and they think, you know, don't, like if you have a product, don't use it. I mean, in this case that we're talking about cocaine, but you can relate this to anything. You could be selling chocolate, toothpicks, clothing, whatever. If you start burning up your own product, guess what? You're not going to make a profit. So this to me specifically, aside from that, is said, don't buy into your own hype. Beware of your ego. Stay humble. Don't get high on your own supply. Don't buy into your own hype. When you're up here, make sure that your ego stays down here because if your ego matches hype, that's where things get rocky. That's where you end up dead in a fountain in your own house. I, I truly believe that if Tony wouldn't have let his own ego get out of control, things would have ended differently for him in the film. And in life, it's the same thing. Whenever you let your ego get out of control, whenever you get cocky, there's a difference between cocky and confident, right? So don't get cocky. It's good to be confident. It's good to believe in yourself. It's good to know what you're capable of. It's not good when you're arrogant, right? So make sure you're not being arrogant. Arrogant is when you don't back up what you say, right? When you're bragging. 
confidence is executing and having results, not just yapping. 